Imran and I'm a Vancouver based artist. Although I like to use different tools and techniques and I create my work in different styles, I really, really enjoy the use of bold and vibrant colors and lots of it too. So I consider myself an expressionist more than anything. occupied with things that we have to do in life and things we have to accomplish that we forget about life itself and what matters most to us and our true passions and what makes us feel really happy and peaceful especially since 2020 uh, with COVID and all the crisis it created in the world which is still continued to 2021 I realized life is really, really, really short. So better not waste it and stick to things that matter most to us and accomplish things that we really like to pursue in life and makes us feel the happiest. So I decided to start this channel to share my experience with um, other people like myself Especially now that everybody's staying home more than they ever did before. So of course, everyone needs a hobby. What better hobby than to create? Create something meaningful and beautiful. So yeah, I decided to start this channel and share my experience and what I've learned along the way with all of you creatives out there that are just like myself. And um, basically, I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks that I know. Our first lesson is going to be an introduction to tools and materials that we need for painting. Are you ready for the first lesson? Let's get started. So first of all, we're going to talk about surfaces. One of the surfaces that we can use is basically paper. We've got all sorts of different paper. We've got regular paper. We've got just a regular paper in sketching notepads. We've got um, stock, card stocks that are a little bit thicker. We've got watercolor paper. I'm just gonna show you this one as an example just so you can see how the texture is different with watercolor paper. I'm not sure if you can see this in the video, but you can see there's a bit of a coarse texture to watercolor paper, and that could be different with different types of watercolor. They also weigh different. They've got uh, different um, thicknesses. You can also use little things like little coasters made with canvas or other material and you can just use these types of service surfaces for painting. You can use surfaces like wooden surfaces. So you can just create an artwork right on this or you could use glass or you could use ceramics and create your artwork right there. And last but not least, you can always use canvas. And canvases come in all different types of shapes and forms. There's rougher ones, there's finer ones. There's ones that are woven looser, ones that are woven tighter. So depending on the type of canvas that you have, you're gonna have a different painting experience and you're gonna have a different outcome or result. Now, after talking about different types of um, surfaces that we can use, let's see what material we can use to create our artwork. So number one, 
just plain pencil. So we've got all sorts of different uh, pencils that we can use. I'm sure you've all seen the regular pencils that you have in schools, the HB pencils. So most pencils, they all either have H or they have B. You see the HB one? These are the regular pencils that we use in school. So B means black, H means hard. The more B's you have on a pencil, you see there's different numbers. So you've got like 2B, 3B, 4B, or 4H, um, or let's see what this one is, H. So H means hard, which means the graphite is harder and it creates a lighter mark. B means black, which means the graphite is softer and it creates darker marks. So the more Bs you've got, the higher the number of the B, it means your pencil gets darker. The higher the number of H, it means it gets harder and therefore they create different effects on your paper. You can also use pens, all sorts of different pens. There's artist pens, there's regular ink pens, there's ones that have uh, oil in them. They're um, oil-based or acrylic-based. You could use these little fun pens with different tips on them. You can change the tip and create different marks and you can just use ink um, that's sold separately. So you just use the ink and you dip in the tip of the pen in the ink and create different marks. So of course you can use those. You're gonna need erasers when you're drawing and don't forget with every beautiful piece of painting, uh, there's a beautiful, usually in most cases, it starts with a beautiful um, sketch or a beautiful um, drawing. So basically your drawing is, your, is the basis of your artwork. Um, there's different types of erasers that you can use. Of course, you're gonna need a sharpener. Um, look at the erasers. There's so many different ones. I believe these ones, for example, they call them the gum eraser and they change shape. So you can kind of make them fit into narrower spaces that, you know, it's harder to get in. You can use little bits of it. And um, as I said, just change the shape in there. Then we've got coloring pencils, of course, and coloring pencils are different too. You've got regular coloring pencils, and then you've got other sorts of coloring pencils. For example, these coloring pencils, um, they're also watercolor pencils. So if you use a little bit of water, it becomes soluble in water. And so you can create a piece that has um, parts in coloring pencil and parts in watercolor, basically using one type of pencil. Then you've got markers. There's all sorts of different markers that you can use to create a piece of art. These are just Sharpies and you see there's a whole variety um, of colors. Other than that, you could use crayons. Everybody's familiar with good old crayons. You can use pastel colors, pastels. And there's different types of pastels. These are oil pastels. You can even use things like glitter in your painting and add little effects here and there. Then we've got watercolor. So let's go to watercolor. We have watercolor as a, basically it's soluble in water. So it's, these are pigments that are soluble in water. It's in a water-based solution. There's also gouache, which is kind of like watercolor, but it's uh, more opaque. It's not as transparent as watercolor. 
Now, watercolor, depending on the different techniques that you use, um, you could help it dry faster or slower. And then also we've got acrylic paints and oil paints, acrylic and oil. So acrylic and oil are paints that um, they're more um, opaque. They're, they're not very transparent. Therefore, they cover your surface really well. They've got lots of pigments. Now, acrylic paints is just pigments that are in a um, acrylic solution. They're water soluble and there's different types of acrylics. Acrylics are fast drying paints. So don't forget, they dry really quickly and there's different ways to um, make them dry slower and there's different mediums that you can use to add more texture to them. So for instance, this one is a coarse texture gel. We're going to get into all of these later in detail. There's different types of acrylic paint. There's also ones that are more liquid. These ones, the first ones that I showed you are, um, these ones are in tubes. They're a bit thicker. They're more like a paste, uh, but these ones, they're more liquid. So basically you can use them for pouring. There's other forms of paint too that you can use on. Um, there's like 3D ones that you can use on um, other surfaces like glass, ceramics, and things like that. Then let's go back to oil painting. Oil paints are um, just pigments that are in an oil solution, usually something like linseed oil. So basically you can use linseed oil to dilute your uh, paint. For acrylics, you can use water, they're water soluble, but as soon as it's dry, they will not be water soluble anymore. With oil paints, you can dilute them in oils like linseed oil and they dry way slower than acrylic paints. Acrylic paints can typically dry in less than an hour even, depending on how much you use. If you're, if you're painting a small surface with little paint, it will dry very quickly, sometimes in a matter of minutes, where with oil paints, they dry very slowly. It could take days to even a week or more, depending on how much uh, paint you use and how thick the layers of paints are. So basically we've gone through the different materials that we can use to create a painting. Other than that, we also have mixed media. Mixed media means you're using different material and techniques to create an artwork. So let's say, instead of just using, let's say I have this painting, and instead of using, this one was created with oil, and it's not finished yet. But let's say I decide to use other materials in it, like I start using clays or um, little pieces of mosa mosaic, uh, mosaic, <laughs> um, pre-cut glass, uh, or even thread, things like that, or glitter. If I start using other materials in my oil painting, then it's not just gonna be oil painting anymore, it's gonna be called uh, mix media. And we're gonna get into all of these in more details in the next videos. So, um, Stay tuned for the next videos and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.